or you will feel depressed all the time. Ah. Yes. Even when you are high. Hello my good people. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Health Wing, a friend to help you stay happy, healthy and strong. So today we are having a guest who will be talking about um addiction and rehabilitation and things that surround that. So welcome and tell us your name. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Njue Mirichi. I come from Embu but currently I'm in Oyugis. So Emmanuel, tell us how did you end up in rehabilitation center? Um, I discovered I had a problem. Mm -hmm. And the best thing is I discovered it for myself and uh, I realized what everyone else was saying was actually right. All the, the stories behind addiction, they're actually true. The things, the, the tales and the tales are, are just right as people explain them. It's just that the addicts don't take it in, they don't accept it as, as easily. So, so what are these things that are around addiction? Uh, first thing, people who are addicts are usually very dirty, very unkept, very disorganized. Uh, usually the thing, the thing that makes you know you are an addict is when you're happy, you're doing it. When you're not, when you're sad, you're doing it. When you're angry, you're doing it. When you do it for, for every emotion and you become unkept, uh, you, you eat, you don't eat properly. You become emaciated. You, you, for some reason, the, the list is so large and personally for me one thing i would like to add is you do not look at the mirror why because you don't like yourself okay but, but does it have any positive vibe maybe the person feels addiction <laughs> yeah uh when you are deep into it the good feeling disappears all you have is the bad things so sometimes you feel like you're depressed Oh, you'll feel depressed all the time. Ah. Yes. Even when you're high. How was it when the rehabilitation? Uh, so the thing is, I, I had noticed I'm getting depressed. Mm -hmm. then, then I noticed it's not really depression. It's something else. But I didn't know what it was. I didn't call it addiction still. I, I struggled with it. I struggled, tried to talk to people, tried to get help. And uh, mental health is, is something that needs to be approached and, and embraced in, in our country because people don't know where to get the help when it comes to, to matters health, uh, mental health. But uh, so I, I thought... Because I feel like this, I feel depressed and I feel it is getting worse and I feel I need the help and I, I, I don't know where to get it. I thought the best option is, is a rehabilitation center. That's where most mental health cases are handled. So I started tracing how to get to, to a rehabilitation center. The first time... To, before I came to this center was when the center was actually starting. I I got someone someone hooked me up and they were insisting I should go, but I was reluctant. I got busy with the, with other things so that I I stopped concentrating. I told myself I'm okay. I am better. I I even reduced on the addiction and and my depression went a bit down. So it was like a way of hiding the whole thing then then when there were no more spots it all erupted again it happened twice or thrice then finally i had a problem telling my mom that i need help by that time i had known it is addiction i had decided if if i can't tell my mom i'll just wait for my death to meet me 
So I had given myself five years. Mm-hmm. Probably it would have been less, but because I was also engaging in other dangerous activities, like uh, partners sleeping with girls with without protection and people you don't even really know. And I actually, when I got to the center, the first thing that had to be taken care of was a yeast infection I had contracted. So I have never told people that it's 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 the first time that people are hearing this. <laughs> but but now now people are will get to know. Yeah. Uh she she didn't know she she gave it to me cuz I I we do not have access to phones when when we get there and when you do have access to phones you only allowed uh, close relatives to speak to. So I I I struggled with it until the moment when my mom came and found me seated with a with a cheek full of mira and a cigarette in my hand and she called me from from where I was seated and she was all sorts of wrong emotions and yeah, it was it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. By then, how old were you? How old were you? I, it's just last year, actually. The moment you start it and don't stop, no, you are headed into into addiction. So I have been using all this stuff for a very long time, that it became a normal thing, and I've been using these things that people seem to people they seem normal. Mira is is not seen as a drug. Mm. Yet, if you look at it properly, it is, I think, the worst drug ever. The person who was in charge of the center, who was running the program, his name is Tim. He he tells me that that Mira is actually right next to heroin. Oh, not even bang. Not even bang, because. When you chew Mirai, you want bang also. You want cigarettes, you want alcohol, and 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 you want, uh, what is it called, codeine. And people put a lot of other drugs on top of it. So it, it it's like the mother of all evil when it comes to drugs. And about Mira, I want to joke a bit, and I'm not sure whether it's a joke. Is it true that it affects the sex part from experience, uh, from experience, I'd say it it plays around with it, because uh, I've had and I have come to know that the biggest sex organ is the brain. Okay. Yeah. So once you mess with the brain, everything else is messed. That part of your brain that affects the other parts is is messed up completely to a point it can't be repaired then automatically it will mess the other the other system so luckily for me it i am healthy thank god (laughs) (laughs) that was a disclaimer (laughs) indirectly (laughs) yes 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 our program is um is purely faith-based no drugs are given no, there's, there's no uh, at you natoka pole pole. Uh-uh. It's the moment you step into our doors and you are starting the program, that is the last day you're having anything. Mm. If you came in high, you're excused. But from that day, you cannot have anything else. How long is the program, by the way? The program, uh, it's said to run for nine months, but... It depends with the people, with who is running the program and how they see the progress, your progress is, and, and such things. Because, like, I graduated, I think, a month early. It can go more. It can come back to a bit less, depending on how, how it is. But uh, professionals say it takes 21 days to break a habit. Three okay, weeks. Three weeks, yeah. That's 21 days. Yeah, three weeks. So after you break the habit... What do you fill that void with? Mm. So we take the time to help you fill that void. That's why we it takes nine months or more or less in between there. 
I know it's cliche, but I filled it with Christ. And I'm filled every day with the Holy Spirit. I ask for it and I pray for it every morning and every evening. What can you tell people who are addicted, who think they are addicted and do not want to go to rehabilitation? If you don't want to go to rehabilitation, you can find a Bible, start reading the Bible and start listening to to go to church it helps uh, get your relationship with god uh, get connected with god because uh, it's said that that man is is spirit soul and and body so if your your body is not right it means your soul it, it manifests from the spirit to soul to to body so if you get your spirit right then your soul and your body will come together and be something nice how are you feeling Life. and what can you tell people about how are you feeling i i am happy i am enjoying life i have discovered life and i am living life and god is good thank you very much for staying in touch until next time bye